4 a.m. In this part of Paris, everything seems calm. It's Valentine's night. However, behind this window, domestic violence is taking place. An hour ago, a 40-year-old man threatened to kill his wife. She managed to get away and called the police. Her husband is at home with a gun. He is drunk. The raid arrives on the scene. Chris Duffy is the group's negotiator. We are going to get in touch with them. We took the woman's phone chip, and we are going to call. How are you going to proceed? Try to get an explanation on what is happening. Kristoff won't say any more. He needs to focus. First step for him is assessing the situation, particularly the profile of the person with whom he will have to start negotiations. His personal history, career, medical record. He is threatening to blow everything up, so the gas has been shut off. But on the other hand, there may be a gas cooker. And he is threatening to commit suicide with a knife. Okay. Was he drunk? He was drunk. He wasn't tipsy. Okay. He keeps trying to reach her. He calls her names. Saying he is going to kill her and kill himself after. He is really pissed off now. So I am waiting to make contact, let Christian be alright. The negotiators, unlike their teammates in the assault group, are never equipped with rifles, but they have powerful weapons, listening and speaking. I can assure you that if you ever go out now, there is no reason to send you anywhere. We make sure that everything ends well. Six in number, these raid men are the men of last resort before a forceful intervention. If you open this door for us to settle this issue, it would be over. Unemployment, marital problems, alcohol, drugs, or madness. They are confronted with a France in distress, which are untold pain that blow up one day out of nowhere. All right. When they do intervene, they are the last link between a maniac and the real world. Their objective is to do everything to make him to surrender and that there is no blood flow. Back in the suburbs of Paris, everyone is at their posts. Sound recovered. I got the sound back. Can we start negotiating now? Okay, go ahead. Is it good? Go on. We try to make contact again. Kristoff has the go-ahead to make contact by phone. The maniac picks up. The man, we'll call him Kevin, entrenched himself at home for two hours. He threatens to kill himself with a knife if his wife does not return to her marital home. I doubt it, sir. That's your nickname, right? Okay, I'm Christoph. Tell me the situation is not that bad with your wife. Are you going to stab yourself if someone enters your home? All right. Meanwhile, thanks to the information collected by Christoph, the head of the section puts these men in position. The purpose of the operation, get as close to the door as possible and set the means of breaking in, which is a three-point armored door. It is on the third floor on the right. We wait for our snipers to be in set. And the Alpha Group, you will gently move forward along this building and go inside the building up to the first floor. In the stairwell and behind the maniac's door, they are a dozen of them in all, armed with shields and assault rifles, ready to intervene if negotiation fails. Please. Okay, so now we give him five minutes. The guys should be discreet. If he hears them, it will make him go mad. Contact is very difficult for several parameters, particularly that of alcohol. Up to 85, commissioners were responsible for negotiations, in addition to managing their team on the field. To relieve them, negotiators were brought in. A profession recognized by ministerial order in 2006 within RAID and GIGN, after three years of training and practice. I saw it, so it is okay. We are going to call him one last time. No, I am not going home. You got it. This is a relatively common case that usually ends quite well. That is to say, individuals will rarely go to the extent of carrying out their threat. The man is suicidal. He has a knife, maybe a gun. 
Christoph must be attentive to the vocabulary used by Kevin, but also in the paraverbal, voice, intonation, silence. This allows him to assess the possibility of taking action. Once you open in force, there is a period of time that gives him the possibility to commit suicide or attempt to do so. Of course. But right now, Kevin wants to talk to his wife. No, if she does not want to talk to you, I can convince her though. Faced with the argument, Kevin's wife took refuge in the fire truck. Christoph was able to persuade her to talk to her husband. I wanted us to talk. You asked to talk to me. I don't want to be compared. You go out of the house and we both talk. Yeah, it's over between us, right? I would like to give you one more chance. But for that, you have to go out so that we both talk about it. I will not leave the house. There you go. I want to. The first person comes in the house and I'll kill myself. I swear to you, you'll explain that to my mom. The situation is at a standstill. Commissioner Desperes and his men must make a decision quickly. It is 6 a.m. and the city is starting to wake up. If you want to enter with force, it is good that he is by the door. We lure him near the door, and that is it. At that moment, you tell him then. Yes, I am going to come and bargain behind the door. I go up behind, yes, but first, you are going to talk to me. I am going up behind the door. If the police want to lure the maniac behind the front door, this is to prevent them from falling through the window during the raid. In the stairwell, Christophe tries a final approach. It is Christoph. As I told you, I have come to the door. What exactly do you want to do? I know you did nothing wrong. One thing is for sure. If you open this door for us to settle this issue, it would be over. Why do you not want to do it? But the maniac does not want to listen. The order is given to break down the door. Please listen to me. Let go of that knife. Go on. Easy. Let go of that knife. In a few seconds, the raid man restrains the man with a knife in his hand. He was about to pierce his stomach. 6.26 a.m. Arrest 6.26 a.m. Inside the apartment, the police finally won't find any gun, only a knife and a desperate man. The knife is there. She hurt me with words. I also wanted to hurt her with words. But there is nothing. We love each other. Even she loves me. There was a story on Friday. We had a bad Valentine's Day, and that is it. It was relatively predictable because of the alcohol issue. There would have been another wait for several hours. Nevertheless, there was a significant risk that he would do something. So the decision was made to intervene. It happened under good circumstances. It doesn't always happen that way. Generally, through negotiation, we are able to largely resolve this type of crisis. Here, there were a few imperatives, particularly timing, which made it necessary to intervene given the risk. Good luck. Thank you. Listen, don't hesitate. <laughs> In an hour, we're ready. Yes, it is good. Three hours after their arrival, the raid men return to service. The maniac, on the other hand, is taken to the nearest police station to be questioned. Raid headquarters a few days later. Training, stewardship, but also moments of relaxation are the daily lot of men when they are not on a mission. Yes. A brief break moment. The alert is on. A team should be ready to leave within 10 minutes. It is a hostage situation. Stephane is the chosen negotiator. Okay, so we are leaving. We are in the northern suburbs of Paris, in Val d'Oise. It is 6 p.m. This suburban area is surrounded by police. Two hours ago, a man in his 60s got into a fight with his sister about an inheritance. He ended up shooting her with his gun. The woman is seriously injured, 
but her brother is holding her hostage. First emergency for the raid, get the injured woman out. Stephane is the negotiator in charge of the case. He has been on the phone with the maniac for 20 minutes, and they talk to each other like old friends. You have doctors coming. They will take care of your sister. The raid boss, Amori de Hautecloak, was present. Please go home. The maniac quickly agrees to have his sister evacuated. She was hit in the knee and hip. Tap, 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 because there is an angle here. The fireman will take care of the injured woman. I can't take it anymore. You have arrived. I can't take it anymore. Now we have a maniac to deal with. We are returning to a situation that I would describe as the most classic. The maniac's sister is now out of danger. The raid boss gives instructions to the negotiator who is on the phone with the man entrenched in his house. I would like to call him back and tell him that we will keep our word. He must surrender, and we assume that nothing has happened. A bullet in the cone. But no, we won't come looking for you. But the maniac is not satisfied yet. He is a man full of resentment. He needs to talk and Stephane becomes his confidant. At first glance, that's a good sign. When a subject shows interest to talk longer, negotiators believe that the situation is starting to improve. I am no longer organized because of her. And after that, to be silent, I am at the end when the first so one is out of the hospital, she had that. him castrated. It's not just for that. There is also, no, 15 years of crap from a gunshot. Raid negotiators often work in pairs. Kajiana's role, one of the four women in Raid, is to advise Stefane during his exchanges with the maniac. She suggests phrases for him to use during the conversation. There are things that don't depend on you because he trusts you. So there are some things that don't depend on you. You have to explain to him. I can't get through two or three of them. He is still in a world where he verbalizes and pours out emotions. Another reason for these pairs is to avoid being victims of Stockholm Syndrome, because negotiators are obliged to create an emotional bond with their target. And when one becomes too involved in exchanges, negotiator number two takes over. Look at the situation as it is. It's something we can stop. Stephane must keep the trust of the maniac, and for that, he does not hesitate to talk to him about his own family. I came to help you. At this hour, I have my little son waiting for me. If I had anything else to do, I would have left. Frankly, if I'm here, it's because it means a lot to me. But he is difficult to reason with. He has been to prison for theft, and to him, there's no question of going back there. I have a feeling that there's something you're scared of. I don't understand why. The only thing I'm afraid of is regretting it for the rest of my life. But if I pull the trigger, I won't have anything to regret. Once again, the maniac is so So to avoid any risk of explosion in the neighborhood, the raid men are going to have to cut off the gas. So the gas shutting operation has begun. Is it okay for Omegas? All of a sudden, the unexpected happens. The man leaves the house. What are you doing here? Come here. Come on, guys. Let's close and gently. Come towards us. On seeing this deployment of armed men, he turns back. He went out quickly. He closed the gate and went in. So we didn't have time. We maintain a safe distance since he is alone and armed. We are not going to take any risks. From now on, everything is going to change. Concerned by the presence of the men in black, the maniac becomes threatening. I do not want the men in black to fall on me as soon as I get my hands on the handle of my gate. There are guys hiding at my neighbor's house with guns in their hands. So if they want to do it that way, it is okay. From my window, I can shoot them too. It is not a problem. If it is threatening, we shoot. After a few hours, to reassure the maniac, the negotiator decides to involve one of his relatives, a friend who is present on the scene. See you right away. You say what I told you earlier. This phone call has been arranged with the negotiators. Yes. No, it is not the end. The boss gave me his word that if you go out, you are not going to be rushed. Nothing is going to be done to you. You should simply not have the gun in your hand. 
Yes, I believe him. So anyway, I am waiting for you. That is good. I am the one who took over the conversation. She's crying, we have to stop here. Here, it is okay. You see, everything is fine. Honestly, there is still a lot of hope. There, the group went up. Yes, it is an assault group. Yet the maniac is determined to commit suicide. Christian, the head of the intervention unit and his men, always posted in front of the pavilion. So you think it down. is going to last? It seems so. It is going to be a good night. It is 8 p.m. In two hours, it will be dark, which will not help the situation. At his post in the truck, Steffing is aware. If the individual does not surrender now, Rayage will have to attack whether Stefane wants it or not. As a basic principle, the negotiator does not decide. At the other end of the Paris region, Commissioner Desperate's team is also on the alert. A young man with schizophrenia threatens to f out the window. He no longer takes his medication and has taken refuge in the family domain. An unbalanced person is a sick person, so we treat him as such. We are well aware that he is not a criminal. Even though we can, and we see that daily, these persons may commit criminal acts, yet they do not have a criminal profile. The problem is that they are not all right and to be able to negotiate with them is not easy because they do not have the usual way of reasoning. Christoph is appointed to negotiate with the maniac. He knows that people with severe psychopathologies can be extremely unpredictable. They represent 20% of cases in interventions of this type. The assault group is set up. The maniac is a big guy. 95 kilos, a 1.80 meters. The team must take this into account. Even though he seems to be dangerous for himself, the deployment of forces remains the same. 30 men fully armed, ready to intervene. But at this stage, the main man for this case is Christoph. Sitting quietly in a neighbor's apartment, he calls the young schizophrenic. Well, you are announcing we are about to start negotiating. 1.45 p.m. it's going. Anytime you want. Hello. Sir, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. That's good. My name is Christo. I am the officer responsible for contacting you. Are you well? I am very fine. And you? Look, it is okay. People were a bit worried in the area because you told them you wanted to f*** out the window. So if you want to know, it worried a few people there. Indeed. Okay, but that is not the case, reassure me. No, that is not the case. Well, would you mind if we both talk about this? You are going to send me to the mental hospital again. Look, things are simple. If you are not threatening to commit suicide, there is no reason to send you there. Can I come see you? I am just one floor below. I am coming to see you. Would you open it for me? Ha ha ha. You are going to send me to the hospital. Listen up. If you think we are going to send you to the hospital, it means that you intend to do things that are not right. But from the way you talk to me, I tell myself that everything is fine. So there is no reason. To dramatize the situation and minimize its outcome is the technique that Christoph chooses to apply. Do you mind if I call you? My name is Christoph. It is Mr. L. It works fine then, you can call me Christo. There is no problem. Then I will come up, and then I will talk to you at the door. Okay, see you right away. The man on the phone is fragile, but for Christoph, it is already a small victory to be able to talk in person with him. We are clear. Provocation, but also threats, insults, or ultimatums. Negotiators need to endure and distance themselves from their own emotions. A classic case of schizophrenia, worried, apparently calm but extremely defensive. He is entrenched in his apartment. To him, such a wall is his protection. Until he is confident, he cannot open. The aim is to stabilize him first and then find a negotiated solution. It is better that I get closer, because if he is far away, I will not hear. 
Safety guidelines are strict. It is behind an armored shield that Christophe approaches the door. He will try to convince the maniac not to take his own life and to open the door. Sir, as promised, I came to the door. Can you hear me right now? I am listening to you. Were you worried to see the fireman outside like that? You must have said to yourself, that is it, I should have opened the door right away. The young man is in a total silent state, an element that worries the negotiator. I am going to tell you a little secret. The worst thing about intervening on a suicidal person is when he does not respond. Because if he does not respond, we have every reason to think that he is doing something to himself. I can assure you that if you come out right now, there is no reason to send you anywhere. I can assure you of that. Since there is no danger, I just want to make one thing clear to you. If we want to go into the house, we can enter because we can simply force open the door, we go in, and we pick you up. Ver, it is not what we want, because we do not want to break the door. Ok, I am coming out. That's nice, that's great. I will pick you up quietly. We are both going to talk. Go on. We are going to talk quietly. Come on, it is all right. He opens the door he had blocked with a heavy wardrobe, but he is surprised by the presence of the men in black and freezes. I am here. Things are going well. You are slowly moving up the column. Come with me, yes, it is good. Come on. It is good. The maniac finally retreats. The forces of order enter into the apartment to make sure there is no danger. Christophe's role ends there, well, almost. It is good. On the other hand, I will go and reassure him because now, he must be mad like a clock. That is good, no joke, no kidding, it's good. Were you scared at the time? Is that it? Were you scared? It is completely legitimate. If he did not say you wanted to commit suicide, you know. Well, is it all right anyway? Are you all right? I am handcuffed. Do I look okay? Yes, I know. Christoph is relieved. He has succeeded in preventing the unstable youth from going to the end of his suicidal intention. The operation went well and smoothly, like most of the time. It does not work all the time. How much? 80%. Well, these are the most difficult cases. Once you have a pathology, it is always very difficult. We are always happy when we pick people up, alive and well. Of course, that is why we are here, to save lives. Okay. For this team, the result of the operation is good. But in Val d'Ois, the tension is still at its peak. The pensioner, who seriously injured his sister, still refuses to surrender. He is entrenched in his house. To unblock the situation, the rage boss and Stephane, the negotiator choose to approach the maniac to talk to him in person. But the latter has demands. Can you move the Almaga that is in front of the window? Almaga is the sniper posted at the neighbor's house, just in front of the pavilion. Can the Almaga at the front window move? With no protection other than their bulletproof vests, the two men present themselves before the maniac. The man is at his window, hidden behind a shutter. Listen to me. You asked to see me. You have my word. If you come out now, you see, look, I am unarmed. I have come to you. That has gone on long enough now. If you come out unarmed, you will not get hurt. I promise you. Is nothing going to happen to me? Ten years? No, not ten years. Surely you will not take ten years. Yes. If you have the choice between yourself in the head or take ten years, what would you do? When you have a son or a friend, you don't ask yourself such questions. Despite their best efforts, the man is really determined to end it. I am going to ask you for one last gift. But come on, if there is a gift, we will have it together. Let me myself in peace. No. Let me get things right with myself. I am no good anymore. I am not even worth the bullet I am going to get in the face. Your son, you know, I was next to him on the phone. Does it still make sense for the father that you are? Look, he is a big boy. He is off the hook. He lives well with his girlfriend. 
He is comfortable. I will tell my kids that I met a guy who sh** himself. Stéphane, what you did not understand is that what happened was bound to happen fairly. It was bound to happen fairly. I also thought about it too. I said, later on, let me die too. Hours pass and the man refuses to leave his house. A decision must be made because he is still armed and dangerous. I do not know where the gun is. By the time we get in, we won't have two minutes. It is closed, even behind. The commander decides to intervene. The option chosen is to send tear gas grenades through the back of the house to prevent the man from using his gun. This would save the assault team some precious seconds to prevent him from himself. So everyone is briefed on the intervention. Well received, everyone. Well received. It's 10 p.m. The assault teams are set. Negotiators only have a few minutes left to convince the maniac to surrender. I will give you five minutes, but as soon as it gets too dark, we are going in. Night has fallen. In five minutes, the assault will be launched. Stefan makes a last attempt. I am at my wit's end. Do you understand that? I am completely at the end. The maniac cannot see it, but on the sign that Tatiana shows Stefan, it says assault. Stéphane's mission ends here. How do you want it to be known if it ends this way? Tear gas grenades are thrown at the back of the house. The group moves forward and fires onto the gate to open it. You are breaking my window. For fear of burglary, the maniac had turned his house into a real bunker. Windows and doors are reinforced. The raid men have to shoot at it severally to get rid of it. They manage to get into the house quickly, Unfortunately, not fast enough. He sh himself in the head. Did he sh himself in the head? Can I go? Yes, after all. Open up. That said, he was going to lockdown. At last, the communication was over. We did what we could. When a maniac is determined to commit suicide, an intervention, even a quick one, by raid men, does not always help avoid a tragedy, but it is still exceptional. Tomorrow, they will go on a mission again. They will do the impossible to save lives, including that of ordinary men and women who want to be heard and no longer know how to do it. More than a job, it is a vocation for them.